Good evening, YouTubers. We're coming to you from the beautiful Buffalo suburb of Lancaster, New York, in the garage of Mr. Strass. And on the drinking menu tonight in my cooler, we have direct from Wisconsin, Steel Reserve, and Utz potato, or pretzels. And on the buffet over here, we have crackers, cheese. I don't know, oh, that's a paraphernalia. Hey, we're towels for your tears. You know, oh, and we got, we got crying towels because there's a lot of, a lot of crying going to occur here tonight. And over here we got Trump fans. Trumps. Yeah, I'm in the, I'm in the wear of the Trump fans. Why do you, well, what has Trump done to make America great? It's in Pennsylvania. That's Mr. Straz, this the owner of this line of This race is really tight. What has he He's done? What has he done? Just look at his last four years in service. On this day, you didn't have what you have today. You had low unemployment. We got low, low gas prices. Peace in the world. You had peace. Look at look at what you got now. Anarchy. All the jobs that you guys have gained are all the people coming back to work from COVID. What you realize? That. What what did, you can't say that? What, what did he do for America in his term? Well, he built what, three quarters make, of a wall. Build the wall, the crime will fall. Did Mexico pay for the wall? No. Okay. But it's funny how you guys always cried about 10, 12 billion, but you got. 300 billion to dish out to Ukraine and 10% goes to the big oh, guy. We're trying, you know. to, trying to stop the Russians, but I guess you love the Russians. Uh, I like world peace. Yeah. And this young lady he's got, he's got works a at, at a restaurant yeah. where yeah. truck drivers yeah. attend. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did Trump do to make America great? Everything. Everything. Okay, that's it. Low gas prices, low hey. food. M Mrs. Mrs. Strass, do you want to put your two cents in for America? I so hope Trump wins. Uh, Harris is an idiot. An idiot? Okay. Um, can't think of anything good about her. Okay. So what did Trump do to make America great? Uh, low gas prices, um, low inflation, um, no wars, no wars, no wars. Democrats are full war. Yeah, we make a lot of money off of wars. <laughs> and Mister, is there somebody out there I missed? No, just me. Oh, okay. She's polite. She's smoking outside the garage. Randy. <laughs> and this is Kaylee. Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, she's a Democrat. <coughs> yeah, because she gets free food and uh, what else does she get? She gets her food still. Trump, 2020. He's been there I would have bought a new hat, but under your administration, I can't afford one. Or, yeah. And where's that? That one's made in China, but. No, it wasn't. U.S. I don't buy Chinese. And uh, Mr. Strass is a bike rider here. You want to tell us about your fine machine here, buddy? Yes, it's American made. American made. Not no rice burner. Under the Republicans. And what year is this, Harley? Uh, I think this is 2005. 2005. Okay. How much mileage on it? 25,000. All right. It's not even broke in yet. Not even. With these gas prices, I can't even drive the bike. I'm going to have to get an e-bike. A guy got in front a guy, a guy got in front of me with an e-bike on Walden doing 35. It's not the place. He, you know, because he changed lanes, and uh, yeah. and I always stuck behind him for a while. And we're watching the play-by-play -play -play here on the Fox News. So we'll just sit back, YouTubers, and you can you can watch the start. Sit back and enjoy. Hosted. All right. Could really be the difference between winning and losing in November. I'm going to sit closer to the food. Yeah, and anybody want to ring the call bell? Reaction from the spin room. Then Sean Hannity takes over at 11 p.m. Eastern time.
We're going to take you to Philadelphia now and the entire debate right here on Fox Post Analysis after you video. here. <coughs> Come here. Hey. All right. Good evening, I'm David and thank you for joining us for tonight's ABC News presidential debate. We want to welcome viewers watching on ABC and around the world tonight. Vice President Kamala Harris and President Donald Trump are just moments away from taking the stage in this unprecedented race for president. And I'm Lindsay Davis. Tonight's meeting could be the most consequential event of their campaigns with Election Day now less than two months away. For Vice President Kamala Harris, this is her first debate since President yeah, Biden withdrew from the race on July 21st. Of course, that decision followed his debate against President Donald Trump in June. Since then, this race has taken on an entirely new dynamic. And that brings us to the rules of tonight's debate, 90 minutes with two commercial breaks. No topics or questions have been shared with the campaigns. Okay, oh shit, oh shit. This is the fucking George Stephanopoulos who's being heard the questions already. One minute for follow-ups, clarifications, or responses. They're lying already. The microphones will be turned on when it's their turn to speak. No pre-written notes allowed. There is no audience here in this hall at the National Constitution Center. This is an internet setting for two candidates who have never met. I forgot, I forgot to show you my solidarity with the DT mandate. When you guys try to stand standing up to the stage, Vice President I'm glad they did. He's going to crash. Oh, you guys would be all on fucking conservation. He's going to crash and burn the Republican Party to the ground. Here they come. Okay, let's see. Do they shake? It's wonderful to have you. It's an honor to have you both here tonight. Good evening. We are looking forward to a spirited and thoughtful debate. So let's get started. I want to begin tonight with the issue that voters repeatedly say is their number one issue, and that is the economy and the cost of living in this country. Oh boy. Vice President Harris, you and President Trump were elected four years ago, and your opponent on the stage here tonight often asks his supporters, are you better off than you were four years ago? When it comes to the economy, do you believe Americans are better off than they were four years ago? So I was raised as a middle class kid. No, really and sure. I am actually the only person on this stage who has a plan that is about lifting up the middle class and working people of America. For you. I believe in the ambition, the aspirations, the dreams of the American people. And that is why I imagine and have actually a plan to build what I call an opportunity economy. Because here's the thing. We know that we have a, a shortage of, of homes and housing, and the cost of housing is too expensive for far too many people. We know that young families need support to raise their children, and I intend on extending a tax cut for those families of $6,000, which is the largest child tax credit Fireballs. that we have given in a long time, so that those young families can afford to buy a crib, buy a car seat, buy clothes for their children. A bunch of bullshit. My, passion one of them is small businesses i was actually my mother raised my sister and me but there was a woman who helped raise us we call her our second mother she was a small business owner i love our small businesses my plan yeah. is to give a fifty thousand dollar tax deduction to start up small businesses knowing they are part of the backbone of america's economy All the my opponent, on the other hand his plan is to do what he has done before which is to provide a tax cut for billionaires and big corporations, yeah. which will result in $5 trillion to America's deficit. My opponent has a plan that I call the Trump's sales tax, which would be a 20% tax on everyday goods that you rely on to get through the month. Economists have said that that Trump sales tax would actually result for middle class families in about $4,000 more a year because of his policies and his ideas about what should be the backs of middle class people paying for tax cuts for billionaires. President Trump will give you two well, gas will be cheaper. First of all, I have no sales tax. That's an incorrect statement. She knows that uh, we're doing tariffs on other countries. Other countries are going to finally, after 75 years, pay us back for all that we've done for the world. And the tariff will be substantial in some cases. I took in billions and billions of dollars, as you know, from China. In fact, they never took the tariff off because it was so much money they can't. It would totally destroy everything that they've set out to do. They're taking in billions of dollars from China and other places they've left the tariffs on. When I had it, I had tariffs and yet I had no inflation. Uh, look, we've had a terrible economy because inflation has, which is really known as a country buster, it breaks up countries. Must we have not. inflation like very few people have ever seen before, probably the worst in our nation's history. 
we were at 21 percent, but that's being generous because many things are 50, 60, 70, 80 percent higher than they were just a few years ago. This has been a disaster for people, for the middle class, but for every class. On top of that, we have millions of people pouring into our country from prisons and jails, from mental institutions and insane asylums, and they're coming well, in you. and they're taking <laughs> <laughs> that are occupied right now by African Americans and Hispanics. Uh -huh. and and also are gonna unions. Be unions are going to be affected. Very soon. The, in, in and you see horn. what's happening. You see what's happening with towns throughout the United States. You look at Springfield, Ohio. You look at Aurora in Colorado. They are taking over the towns. They're taking over buildings. They're going in violently. These are the people that she and Biden let into our country, and they're destroying our country. They're dangerous, they're at the highest level of criminality, and we have to get them out, we have to get them out fast. I created one of the greatest economies in the history of our country. Amen. I'll do it again, and even better. We are gonna to get to immigration and border security during this debate. I would like to let Vice President Harris respond on the economy here. Well, I would love to. Let's talk about what Donald Trump left us. Donald Trump left us the worst unemployment since the Great Depression. Donald Trump left us the worst public health epidemic in a century. Donald well, Trump that's left what it, us you guys should have the did worst it a year attack earlier on our democracy when you released it since bags. the Civil War. And what we have done is clean up Donald Trump's mess. What we have done and what I intend to do is build on what we know are the aspirations and the hopes of the American people. But I'm going to tell you all in this debate tonight, you're going to hear from the same old tired playbook a bunch of lies, grievances, and name calling. What you're going to hear tonight is a detailed and dangerous plan called Project 2025 that the former president intends on implementing if he were elected Why? again. I believe very strongly that the American people want a president who understands the importance of bringing us together knowing we have so much more in common than what separates us, and I pledge to you to be a president for all Americans. President Trump will give you a minute to respond. Number one, I have nothing to do, as you know, and as she knows better than anyone, I have nothing to do with Project 2025. Uh, that's out there. I haven't read it. I don't want to read it purposely. I'm not going to read it. This was a group of people that got together. They came up with some ideas, I guess some good, some bad, but it makes no difference. I have nothing to do. Everybody knows I'm an open book. Everybody knows what I'm going to do. Cut taxes very substantially and create a great economy like I did before. We had the greatest economy. We got hit with a pandemic. And the pandemic was not since 1917, where 100 million people died, has there been anything like it. We did a phenomenal job with the pandemic. We handed them over a country where the economy and where the stock market was higher than it was before the pandemic came in. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. We made ventilators for the entire world. We got gowns, we got masks, we did things that nobody thought possible. And people give me credit for rebuilding the military. They give me credit for a lot of things, but not enough credit for the great job we did with the pandemic. But the only jobs they got were bounce back jobs. These were jobs bounce back and it bounced back and it went to their benefit. But I was the one that created them. They know it and so does everybody else. Yeah, all the people were on unemployment. So, work. Donald Trump has no plan for you. And when you look at his economic plan, it's all about tax breaks for the richest people. I am offering what I describe as an opportunity economy, and the best economists in our country, if not the world, have reviewed our relative plans for the future of America. She's not even told what Goldman plans. Sachs has said is that Donald Trump's plan would make the economy worse, mine would strengthen the economy. She's a plagiarizer. What the Wharton she School has said plans. is Donald Trump's plan would actually explode the deficit. 16 Nobel laureates have described his economic plan as something that would increase inflation and by the middle of next year would invite a recession. You just have to look at where we are and where we stand on the issues. And I'd invite you to know that Donald Trump actually has no plan for you because he is more interested in defending himself than he is in looking out for you. That's just a sound that you have to say. Look, I went to the Wharton School of Finance and many of those professors, the top professors, I think my plan is a brilliant plan. It's a great plan. It's a plan that's going to bring up our, our worth, our value as a country. It's going to make people want to be able to go and work and uh, create jobs and create a lot of 
good, solid money for our, co for our country. And just to finish off, uh, she doesn't have a plan. She copied Biden's plan, and it's like four sentences, like run, spot, run. Four sentences that he just, oh, we'll try and lower taxes. She doesn't have a plan. Take a look at her plan. She doesn't have a plan. Mr. President, I do want to drill down on something you both brought up. Uh, the Vice President brought up uh, your tariffs. You responded, and let's drill down on this, because your plan is what she calls is essentially a national sales tax. Your proposal calls for tariffs, as you yeah. pointed out here. Um, foreign imports across the board. You recently said that you might double your plan, imposing tariffs up to 20% on goods coming into this country. As you know, many economists say that we tariffs at that level costs are then passed on to the consumer. Vice President Harris has argued that it'll mean higher prices on gas, food, clothing, medication, arguing it costs the typical family nearly $4,000 a year. Do you believe Americans can afford higher prices because of tariffs? They're not going to have higher prices. What's going to have, and who's going to have higher prices is China and all of the countries that have been ripping us off for years. I charge, I was the only president ever. China was paying us hundreds of billions of dollars, and so were other countries. And you know, if she doesn't like them, they should have gone out and they should have immediately cut the tariffs. But those tariffs are there three and a half years now under their administration. We are going to take in billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars. I had no inflation, virtually no inflation. They had the highest inflation perhaps in the history of our country because I've never seen a worse period of time. People can't go out and buy cereal or bacon or eggs or anything else. These, the people of our country are absolutely dying with what they've done. They've destroyed the economy. And all you have to do is look at a poll. The polls say 80 and 85 and even 90 percent that the Trump economy was great, that their economy was terrible. Vice President Harris, I do want to ask for your response. And you heard what the president said there, because the Biden administration did keep a, a number of the Trump tariffs in place. So how do you respond? Well, let's be clear that the Trump administration resulted in a trade deficit, one of the highest we've ever seen in the history of America. He invited <coughs> trade wars. You want to talk about his deal with China, what he ended up doing is under Donald Trump's presidency, he ended up selling American chips to China to help them improve and modernize their military, basically sold us out. What a policy about China should be in making sure the United States of America wins the competition for the 21st century, which means focusing on the details of what that requires, focusing on relationships with our allies, focusing on investing in American-based technology so that we win the race on AI, on quantum computing focusing on what we need to do to support America's workforce so that we don't end up having on the short end of the stick in terms of workers' rights. But what Donald Trump did, let's talk about this, with COVID, is he actually thanked President Xi for what he did during COVID. Look at his tweet. Thank you, President Xi, exclamation point when we know that she was responsible for lacking and not giving us transparency about the origins of COVID. First of all, they bought the chips from Taiwan. We hardly make chips anymore because of uh, philosophies like they have and policies like they have. I don't say her because she has no policy. Everything that she believed three years ago and four years ago is out the window. She's going to my philosophy now. In fact, I was going to send her a MAGA hat. She's gone to my philosophy, but yeah. if she ever got yeah. elected, she'd change it. And it will be the end of our country. What she's a Marxist. That? Everybody knows she's a Marxist. Her father's a Marxist professor in economics. And he taught her well. But when you look at what she's done to our country, and when you look at these millions and millions of people that are pouring into our country monthly, where it's, I believe, 21 million people, not the 15 that people say, and I think it's a lot higher than the 21, that's bigger than New York State pouring in. And just look at what they're doing to our country. They're criminals. Many of these people coming in are criminals. And that's bad for our economy, too. You know, you mentioned before, we'll talk about immigration later. Well, bad immigration is the worst thing that can happen to our economy. 
They have, what and she has destroyed our in? country Still with policies that can say, oh, it's oh, it's those policies that can say oh. they have to hate our country. President Trump. 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 I want to turn to the issue of abortion. Oh, I don't drink Bud Light. No more. No more. Okay. Trump to be the most pro-life president in the world. Last month, you said the Trump administration would be great for women and their reproductive rights. In your home state of Florida, you surprised many uh, with regard to your six-week abortion ban because you initially had said that it was too short. And you said, quote, I've been voting that we need more than six weeks. But then the very next day, you reversed course and said you would vote to support Trump's the six-week looks good ban. tonight. Yeah. Vice yeah. President yeah. Harris says that people yeah. shouldn't yeah. trust you on the issue of, of abortion. Got the orange out of it. You've changed your position so many times. Therefore, why should they trust you? Well, the reason I'm doing that vote is because the plan is, as you know, the vote is, they have abortion in the ninth month. They even have, and you can look at the governor of West Virginia, the previous governor of West Virginia, not the current governor, who's doing an excellent job, but the governor before, he said the baby will be born and we will decide what to do with the baby. In other words, we'll execute the baby. And that's why I did that, because that predominates, because they're radical. The Democrats are radical in that. And her vice presidential pick, which I think was a horrible pick, by the way, for our country, because he is really out of it. But her vice presidential pick says abortion in the ninth month is absolutely fine. He also says execution after birth. It's an execution, no longer abortion, because the baby is born. Is got the okay. And going. that's not okay with me. Hence the vote. But what I did is something for 52 years, they've been trying to get Roe v. Wade into the states. And through the uh, genius and, and heart and strength of six Supreme Court justices, we were able to do that. Now, I believe in the exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. I believe strongly in it. Ronald Reagan did also. 85% of Republicans do exceptions. Very important. But we were able to get it, and now states are voting on it. And for the first time, you're going to see, look, this is an issue that's torn our country apart for 52 years. Every legal scholar, every Democrat, every Republican, liberal, conservative, they all wanted this issue to be brought back to the states where the people could vote. And that's what happened. Happened. Now, Ohio, the vote was somewhat liberal. Kansas, the vote was somewhat liberal, much more liberal than people would have thought. But each individual state is voting. It's the vote of the people now. It's not tied up in the federal government. I did a great service in doing it. It took courage to do it. And the Supreme Court had great courage in doing it. And I give tremendous credit to those six justices. There is no state in this country where it is legal to kill a baby after it's born. None of us are going to get your response what? to it. They're from Pennsylvania. Well, as I said, you're going to hear yeah. a bunch of lies. And that's not actually a surprising fact. Hanover. Let's understand how we got here. Donald Trump hand selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would undo the protections yeah. of Roe v. Wade. And they did exactly as he intended. And now in over 20 states, there are Trump abortion bans, which make it criminal for a doctor or nurse to provide health care in one state, it provides prison for life. Trump abortion bans that make no exception even for rape and incest. We should like understand what loss. that means. A survivor of Very a spicy. crime of violation to their body does not have the right to make a decision about what happens to their body next. That is immoral. Yeah. And no. one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government and Donald Trump certainly should not be telling a woman what to do with her body. I have talked with women around our country. You want to talk about this is what people wanted? Pregnant women who want to carry a pregnancy to term, suffering from a miscarriage, being denied care in an emergency room because the health care providers are afraid they might go to jail and she's bleeding out in a car in the parking lot? Do you know that? Her husband baby in the dumpster. A 12 or 13 year old survivor of incest being forced to carry a pregnancy to term? They don't want that. And I pledge to you, when Congress passes a bill to put back in place the protections of Roe v. Wade as President of the United States, I will proudly sign it into law. But understand, 
If Donald Trump were to be reelected, he will sign a national abortion ban. Understand, in his Project 2025, there would be a national abortion a monitor that would be monitoring your pregnancies, your miscarriages. I think the American people believe that certain freedoms, in particular the freedom to make decisions about one's own body, should not be made by the government. Thank you, Vice Only President. Only unless it's COVID vaccines. I yes, hope they don't right. matter by, by, by the sperm call and my dick blast. My, 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 my body, my choice. choice. What everybody wanted. Democrats, I got my um, latest um, COVID shot last week. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. Did you put, did you put me in your will yet? Did you put me back into the States? And the no, States are coming. And it may take a little time. But for 52 what, what kind of years, this do you think you're worth has my torn world? tools. Remember, I'm getting apart. mine anyways. Everybody and they wanted it back in the states. My kids don't do any work with Nobody me. thought it was possible. The states are now voting. What she says is an absolute lie. And as far as the abortion ban, no, I'm not mm -hmm. in favor of the abortion ban. But it doesn't matter, matter because I want this issue has been taken tomorrow. over by the states. Would you veto a now? That was the third one. I don't have to because again, two things. First of all, she said she'll go back to Congress. She'll never get the vote. It's impossible for her to get the vote, especially now with the 50-50 and essentially 50-50 in both Senate and the House. She's not going to get the vote. She can't get the vote. She won't even come we close to it. So it's just her. talk. You know what it reminds me of when they oh, said yeah. they're going to get student That's loans crazy. terminated, and it ended up being a total catastrophe. The student oh. loans, and then her, I, I think probably her boss, uh, if you call him a boss, he spends all his time on the beach. But look, her boss went out and said, we'll do it again, we'll do it a different way. And he went out, got rejected again by the Supreme Court. So all these students got uh, taunted with this whole thing about this whole idea and how unfair that would have been part of the reason they lost to the millions and millions of people that had to pay off their student loans they didn't get it for free but the good it's, it's the same TV. way that they talked about yeah, that, it's pretty that good. they talked about abortion but if I could just get a yes or no because you're running me yeah, I walked into Walmart said that you would just want to buy some fishing hooks yeah. well, well I walked up and said with uh, J.D. in all fairness the uh, price keep coming down I don't mind but I think you're speaking for me but I really didn't look we don't have to discuss it because she'd never be able to get it, just like she couldn't get student loans. They couldn't get student loans. They didn't even come close to getting student loans. They taunted young people and a lot of other people that had loans. They can never get this approved. So it doesn't matter what she says about going to Congress. Well, wonderful. Let's go to Congress. Do it. But the huh. fact is that for years they wanted to get it out of Congress and out of the federal government. I just noticed as I was drinking and looking around the room that Mr. Straz has got a lot of... Sports so memorabilia. Yeah. We got bills there. Cut out and metal. Hey, don't show the liberals what I got. Reinstating the protection of Roe v. Wade. Don't show the what? Yeah, yeah, Josh Allen. Yeah. Nowhere in America. Bill's garage. Close September. Carrying a pregnancy. It's got a Bill's mafia plate. And and asking for an abortion. That is not happening. It's insulting to the women of America. And understand what has been happening under Donald Trump's abortion bans. You're from Pennsylvania? Pray and, 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 and from Pennsylvania? Yeah. Family. Oh, that's why you get the Pittsburgh. My, my dad's a Pittsburgh fan. We got Josh Allen here. Working people, working women who are working one or two jobs, that. who can barely afford childcare as it is, have to travel to and another state flag. to get on a plane. The penis is a little small. To go and get the health care she needs. Barely can afford to do it, and what you are putting her through yeah. is unconscionable. And the people of America have Look at us. The, the majority. We got to huddle around the wood burner because we can't afford natural right. gas anymore. Yeah. Why, in every state where this issue has been on the ballot, and can I show them what's in your beer fridge? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't That's trust the liberals. <laughs> They'll be looting. <laughs> <laughs> They'll target this garage. Well, they may come. They don't know the address where the Harleys at anyway. In fact, when they got a very negative bluegrass state up there from the Alabama courts, I saw the people of Alabama and the legislature two days later voted it in. I've been a leader on it. Margarita way. Everybody else knows it. I have been a leader on fertilization. I hope you paid the town for that sign. 
Yes, but most of it was down on the ground, then it's Will free. she allow abortion no, in the eighth board, ninth month, seventh month? Murder, murder, murder. Okay, Welcome again to Margaritaville. You could do abortions in the seventh month, the eighth month, the ninth month, and probably after. What are you drinking tonight? Look at the young lady. Ultra. Ultra. The governor of Virginia said we put the baby aside. Water. Wegman Spring Water. You've lost a little weight since I last saw you. Immigration and border security. We know it's a for the Olympics. Republicans, Democrats, voters across the board in this country. Vice President Harris, you were tasked by President Biden at getting to the root causes of migration from Central America. We know that illegal border crossings reached a record high in the Biden administration. This past June, President Biden imposed tough new well, asylum yeah, restrictions. We know the numbers since then have dropped significantly. But my question to you tonight is why did the administration wait until six months before the election to act? And would you have done anything differently from President Biden on this? So I'm the only person on this stage who has prosecuted transnational criminal organizations for the trafficking of guns, drugs, and human beings. And let me say that the United States Congress, including some of the most conservative members of the United States Senate, came up with a border security bill, which I supported. And that bill would have put 1,500 more border agents on the border to help those folks who are working there right now over time, trying to do their job. It would have allowed us to stem the flow of fentanyl coming into the United States. I know there are so many families watching tonight who have been personally affected by the surge of fentanyl in our country. That bill would have put more resources to allow us to prosecute transnational criminal organizations for trafficking in guns, drugs, and human beings. But you know what happened to that bill? Donald Trump got on the phone, called up some folks in Congress, and said, kill the bill. And you know why? Because he preferred to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And understand, this comes at a time where the people of our country actually need a leader who engages in solutions, who actually addresses the problems at hand. But what we have in the former president is someone who would prefer to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And I'll tell you something, he's gonna talk about immigration a lot tonight even when it's not the subject that is being raised. And I'm gonna actually do something really unusual and I'm gonna invite you to attend one of Donald Trump's rallies because it's a really interesting thing to watch. Yes. You will see during the course of his rallies, he talks about fictional characters like Hannibal Lecter. He will talk about windmills called cancer. And what you will also notice is that people start leaving his rallies early out of exhaustion and boredom. Yeah, because they gotta go and to work. The one thing you will not hear him talk about gunfire. is you. You will not hear him talk about your needs, your dreams, and your need, and your desires. And I'll tell you, I believe you deserve a president who actually puts you first. And I pledge to you that I will. But well, so well, so well, 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 on that point, I want to get your response. Well, I would like to today. respond. Let me just ask though, why did you try to kill that bill exactly. and successfully so that would have put thousands of additional agents and officers on the board? First, let me respond is to the Please. rallies. She said people start leaving. People don't go to her rallies. There's no reason to go. Oh. And the people that do go, she's bussing them in and paying them to be there. And then showing <laughs> them in a like different light. So right. she can't talk about that. People don't leave my rallies. We have the Who biggest rallies, the most incredible rallies in the history of Nobody rallies. cares. That's because people want to take their country back. Our country is being okay. lost. We're a failing nation. And it happened three and a half years ago. And what, what's going on here, you're going to end up in World War III, just to go into another subject. That's the one hand in the what they have these done to our now. country by allowing these millions and millions of people to come into our country and look at what's happening to the towns all over the United States. And a lot of towns don't want to talk. It's not going to be Aurora or Springfield. A lot of towns don't want to talk about it because they're so embarrassed by it. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating Kelly, the watch out. They're eating... We're eating dogs. We're eating the Kelly, there are three the dogs in Springfield. Only one cares for the They are, they can't afford to. And it's a shame. As far well, they're as illegal. They get everything for free. Are concerned, as yeah. far as well, they the can afford it. Well, they might just like to eat dogs. Say, they want to bring our country back. I hate these dogs. They want to make America great again. Very simple phrase. Make America great again. 
That's she's what you're talking about. She's destroying this country. Of and if she becomes president, this country doesn't, doesn't have a chance of hurt. success. Not only Pops. success, they will end up Obama. being Venezuela or on or steroids. Or I know you bring up Springfield, uh, yeah. Ohio, oh, and, and oh, ABC News did reach out to the city manager oh, there. Uh, he told us there have been no credible reports of specific claims of pets being harmed, injured, or abused by individuals within the immigrant community. Well, I've seen people on television. Let me just say here, this is the people on television said my dog was taken and used for food. So maybe he said that, and maybe that's a good yeah. thing to say for a city manager. I'm not taking this from but television. The I'm taking from the city manager. Your dog was eaten by. The people that went there. Get eating dogs. dogs. Look, you're losing it, man. There's no evidence of that. Vice we'll President Harris, I'll let you respond. Maybe that was in a Korean community. <laughs> you talk about extreme. <laughs> uh, you know, I, this is, I think, one of the reasons why in this election, I actually have the endorsement of 200 Republicans who have formally worked with President Bush, uh, Mitt Romney, and John sure. McCain including the endorsements well, of former Vice President Dick Cheney and Congress member Liz Cheney. Oh, oh. And if you want to really know the inside track on who the former president is, if he didn't make it clear already, just ask people who have worked with him. His former chief of staff, a four-star general, has said he has contempt for the Constitution of the United States. His former national security advisor has said he is dangerous and unfit. His former Secretary of Defense has said the nation of the Republic would never survive oh, yeah. another Trump term. Well, probably talking to her in her and ear. when we listen to this kind of rhetoric, she when the issues that affect the American people are yeah. not being addressed, I think the choice is clear in this election. President Trump, I'll give you a quick minute to respond. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you, because I hear that. See, I'm a different kind of a person. I fired most of those people. Not so graciously. They did bad things or a bad job. I fired them. They never fired one person. They didn't fire anybody having to do with Afghanistan and the Taliban and the 13 people who's, who's were just killed, viciously and violently killed. And I got to know the parents and the family. They didn't fire. They should have fired all those generals, all those top people, because that was one of the most incompetently handled situations anybody has ever seen. So when somebody does a bad job, I fire him. And you take a guy like Esper, he was no good, I fired him. So he writes a book. Another one writes a book. Because with me, they can write books with nobody else, can they? They have done such a poor job, and they never fire anybody. Look at the economy. Look how, look at the inflation. They didn't fire any of their economists. They have the same people. That's a good way not to have books written about you. But just to finish, I got more votes than any Republican in history by far. In fact, I got more votes than any president, sitting president, in history by far. Let me continue on immigration. It was what you wanted to talk about earlier, so let's get back to your deportation uh, uh, proposal that the vice president has reacted to as well. Uh, president Trump, you call this the largest domestic deportation operation in the history of our country. You say you would use the National Guard. You say if things get out of control, you'd have uh, no problem using the U.S. With military. Uh, you also said you would use local police. Uh, how would you uh, deport 11 million undocumented immigrants? I know you, you believe that number is, is much higher. Uh, take us through this. What does this look like? Will authorities be going door to door in this country? Yeah. It is much higher because of them. They allowed criminals, many, many millions of criminals. They allowed terrorists. They allowed common street criminals. They allowed people to come in, drug dealers, to come into our country. And they're now in the United States and told by their countries like Venezuela, don't ever come back or we're going to kill you. Do you know that crime in Venezuela and crime in countries all over the world is way down? You know why? Because they've taken their criminals off the street and they've given them to her to put into our country. Uh -huh. And this will be one of the greatest mistakes in history for them to allow, and I think they probably did it because they think they're gonna get votes, but it's not worth it because they're, they're destroying the fabric of our country by what they've done. There's never been anything done like this at all. They've destroyed the fabric of our country. Millions of people let in, and all over the world, crime is down, all over the world except here. Crime here is up and through the roof, despite their fraudulent statements that they made. Crime in this country is 
through the roof. And we have a new form of crime. It's called migrant crime. And it's happening at levels that nobody thought possible. President Trump, as you know, the FBI says overall violent crime is actually coming down in this country. But Excuse President me, Harris, the FBI defraud, they were defrauding statements. They, they didn't include the worst cities. They didn't include the cities with the worst crime. It was a, a fraud. Just like their number of 818,000 jobs that they said they created turned out to be a fraud. President Trump, thank you. I'll let you respond. Well, I think this is so rich. It's a shock. Coming from someone who has been prosecuted for national security crimes, economic crimes, election interference, has been found liable for sexual assault, and his next big court appearance is in November at his own criminal sentencing. And let's be clear where each person stands on the issue of what is important about respect for the rule of law and respect for law enforcement. The former vice president called for defunding federal law enforcement, 45,000 agents, get this, on the day after he was arraigned on 34 felony counts. So let's talk about what is important in this race. It is important that we move forward, that we turn the page on this same old tired rhetoric and address the needs of the American people, address what we need to do about the housing shortage, which I have a plan for, address what we must do to support our small businesses, address bringing down the price of groceries. But frankly, the yeah, American people are exhausted years. with the right. same now, old tired Now you got it all figured out. Paris. Thank you. Excuse me. Every one of those cases was started by them against their political That's opponent. Exactly what and I'm winning say. most of them, and I will win the rest of the appeal. And you saw that with the decision that came down just recently from the Supreme Court. I'm winning most of them. But those are cases, it's called weaponization. Never happened in this country. They weaponized the Justice Department. Every one of those cases was involved with the DOJ, from oh, Atlanta oh, and Farley Willis to, to the uh, Attorney General of New York and the DA in New York. Every one of those cases. And then they say, oh, he was he's a criminal. They're the ones that made them go after me. By the way, Joe Biden was found essentially guilty on the documents case. And what happened in my documents case? They said, oh, that's the toughest of them all. Don't say a complete and total <laughs> victory. Two months ago, it was thrown out. Which they almost to it and they used it, and it's never happened in this country. They used it to try and win an election. They're fake cases. On his documents that he left all over the place. Weaponization, Justice Department. Well, let's talk about extreme and understand how Texas election in 2024 is taking place. No, the United States the Supreme FBI. Court recently oh, ruled sorry. that the former president would essentially be immune from any misconduct if he were to enter the White House again. Understand that this is someone who has openly said he would terminate, I'm quoting, terminate the Constitution of the United States, that he would weaponize the Department of Justice against his political enemies. Someone who has openly expressed disdain for members of our military. Understand what me, it would like mean Russian Donald Dossier. Trump back in the White House Fake with no guardrails. Because so certainly we know now the court won't stop him. We know J.D. Vance is not going to no. stop him. Yeah. It's up no. to the American people said that. to stop him. That stupid asshole you are. In your that last one for president. Prove it. Pull it out. Yeah. This is the one that weaponized, not me. She weaponized. I probably took a bullet to the head because of the things that they say about me. The bullet, they talk uh, about the democracy. I'm a threat to democracy. They're the threat Thank to God democracy. Thank God. Like Russia, Russia, Russia. Is that boy is simply like a guy who looks at Vice President Harris, losing. in your last run for president, you said you wanted to ban fracking. Now you don't. You wanted mandatory government buyback programs for assault weapons. Now your campaign says you don't. You supported decriminalizing border sure, crossings. Now you're taking a harder line. I know you say that your values have not changed. So then why have so many of your policy positions changed? So my values have not changed, and I'm going to discuss every one of the, at least every point that you've made. But in particular, let's talk about fracking because we're here in Pennsylvania. I made that very clear in 2020. I will not ban fracking. I have not banned fracking as Vice President of the United States, and in fact, I was the tie-breaking vote on the Inflation Reduction Act, which opened new leases for fracking. My position is that we have got to invest 
in diverse sources of energy so we reduce our reliance on foreign oil. We have had the largest increase in domestic oil production in history because of an approach that recognizes that we cannot over rely on foreign oil. As it relates to my values, let me tell you, I grew up a middle class kid raised by a hardworking mother who worked and saved and was able to buy our first home when I was a teenager. The values I bring to the importance of home ownership, knowing not everybody got handed $400 million on a silver platter and then filed bankruptcy six times, is a value that I bring to my work to say we are going to work with the private sector and home builders to increase 3 million homes, increase by 3 million homes by the end of my first term. My work that is related to having a friend when and I was in high school who was sexually assaulted. She doesn't by realize how bankruptcies work. And my focus you can be a billionaire and still file bankruptcy. That's how they become the rich. They don't use their own money. It is deeply grounded in the importance of standing up for those who are most vulnerable. My work that is about protecting well, Social Security and Medicare is based on long-standing work that I have done, no, protecting seniors from scams. My values have assholes. not changed. And what is important is that she there is a present who actually brings values I just want to know where the hell she's been for the last four years. Not lifting she has done nothing. And not beating people down and name-calling. The true measure of the leader is the leader who actually understands the strength is not to. in beating people down, she's it's in lifting people up. Together. I intend to be She's probably listening to a tape of herself. President Trump, you're well, first of all, I was given $400 million. I wish I was. My father was a Brooklyn builder, Brooklyn, Queens. I had a great father, and I learned a lot from him. But I was given a fraction of that, a tiny fraction, and I built it into many, many billions of dollars, many, many billions. And when people see it, they are even surprised. So we don't have to talk about that. Fracking? She's been against it for 12 years. Uh, defund the police? She's been against that forever. She gave all that stuff up very wrongly, very horribly, and everybody's laughing at it, okay? They're all laughing at it. She gave up at least 12 and probably 14 or 15 different policies. Like, she was big on defund the police. In Minnesota, she went out, wait a minute, I'm talking now. If you don't mind, please. Does that sound familiar? She went out, she went out <laughs> to Minnesota and went to red criminals that killed yeah. people, that burned down Minneapolis. She went out and raised money to get them out of jail. She did things that nobody would ever think of. Now she wants to do transgender operations on illegal aliens that are in prison. Well, this is a radical left liberal that would do this. She wants to confiscate your guns, and she will never allow fracking in Pennsylvania. If she won the election, fracking in Pennsylvania will end on day one. Just to finish one thing, so important in my opinion. So I got the oil business going like nobody has ever done before. They took, when they took over, they got rid of it, started getting rid of it, and the prices were going up the roof. They immediately let these guys go to where they were. I would have been five times, four times, five times higher because you're talking about three and a half years ago. They got it up to where I was because they had no choice because the prices of energy were, were quadrupling and doubling. You saw what happened to gasoline. So they said, let's go back to Trump. But if she won the election, the day after that election, they'll go back to destroying our country and oil will be dead, fossil fuel will be dead, we'll go back to windmills and we'll go back to solar where they need a whole desert to get some energy to come out. You ever see a solar plant? By the way, I'm a big fan of solar, but they take 400, 500 acres of desert soil. These are not good things for the environment. Thank you. Lindsay, thank you. We have an election in just 56 days. And I want to talk about the peaceful transfer of power, which, of course, we all know is a cornerstone of our democracy and the role of the president oh, uh, in a moment January of crisis. Uh, Mr. President, on January 6th, you told your supporters to march to the Capitol. You said you would be right there with them. Uh, the country and the world saw what played out of the Capitol that day, the officers coming under attack. Aides in the West Wing say you watched it unfold on television off the Oval Office. Uh, you did send out tweets, but it was more than two hours before you sent out that video message uh, telling your supporters to go home. Is there anything you regret about what you did on that day? You just said a thing that isn't covered peacefully and patriotically. I said during my speech, not later on. 
peacefully and patriotically. And nobody on the other side was killed. Ashley Babbitt was shot by an out of control police officer that should have never, ever shot her. It's a disgrace. But we didn't do this group of people that have been treated so badly. I asked, what about all the people that are pouring into our country and killing people that she allowed to pour in? She was the border czar, remember that? She was the border czar. She doesn't want to be called the border czar because she's embarrassed by the border. In fact, she said at the beginning, well, I'm surprised you're not talking about the border yet. That's because she knows what a bad job they've done. What about those people? What's, when are they going to be prosecuted? Yeah. When are these people from yeah, countries all over people. the world, not just South America, they're coming in from all over the world, David, all over the world. And crime rates are population. down all over the world because of it. But, let me but when, are those, David, when are those people going to be prosecuted? When are the people that you burned down Minneapolis going to be prosecuted? Or in here. Seattle. They went into Seattle. They took over a big percentage of the city of Seattle. When are those people going to be prosecuted? But let me just ask you. You might ask her that question. You, you were the president. You were watching it unfold on television. And it's a very simple question as we move forward toward another election. Is there anything you regret about what you did on that day? Well, yes, I had nothing to do with that other than they asked me to make a speech. I showed up for a speech. I said, I think it's going to be big. I went to Nancy Pelosi and the mayor of Washington, D.C. And the mayor put it back in writing, as you know. I said, you know, this is going to be a very big rally or whatever you want to call it. And again, it wasn't done by me. It was done by others. I said, I'd like to give you 10,000 National Guard or soldiers. They rejected me. Nancy Pelosi rejected me. It was just two weeks ago. Her daughter has a tape of her saying she is fully responsible for what happened. They want to get rid of that tape. It would have never happened if Nancy Pelosi and the mayor of Washington did their jobs. I wasn't responsible for security. Nancy Pelosi was responsible. She didn't do her job. The question was about you as president, true. not about former true. Speaker Pelosi. About. I do want Vice true. President Harris to respond. No, it is true. I was at the Capitol on January 6th. I was the nice Vice nice President day. elect. I was also an acting senator. I was there. And on that day, the President of the United States incited a violent mob to attack our nation's capital, to desecrate our nation's capital. On that day, 140 law enforcement officers were injured, Good. and some died. And understand, the president has been indicted and impeached, and impeached for exactly that reason. But this is not an isolated situation. Let's remember Charlottesville, where there You're was an a mob of people carrying tiki torches spewing anti-Semitic hate. And what did the president then at the time They'd say? The there were fine people on his side. Let's remember. What for yeah, but no, no, I'm looking when to see it came if to the was a or militia. Liger or malt. The it's president malt. said, the malt former liquor? president said, yeah, stand back and stand by. Alcohol. How much? So for everyone who remembers what January 6th was, <laughs> It's all the right I say, we don't have to go back. The big hands are right eight now. Let's not go back. We're not going back. It's time to turn the page. Oh, really? yeah. And if that was a bridge too it's far smooth. for you, well, there is a place Get a glass of in our anchor. campaign for you. Oh, well, next time you snap one, I'll, I'll take a little for bit. For country, yeah. to stand for our democracy, to stand yeah, for the rule of law, and, and to end the chaos, and to end the approach that is about attacking the foundations of our democracy because you don't like the outcome and be clear on that point I mean, Donald Trump so small, it. it's called has said in this election there will be prepared. a bloodbath you are, you are <laughs> if this and the outcome of this election is not to his liking let's turn the page on years. this let's not go back let's out. chart a course for the future and not going back to the past let me just follow up here it was a different term, and it was a term that related to energy because they have destroyed our I'm energy business. That was where the bloodbath was. Also, on Charlottesville, that story has been, as you would say, debunked. Laura Ingram, Sean Hannity, Jesse, all of these people, they cover it. If they go an extra sentence, they will say it's perfect. It was debunked in almost every newspaper, but they still bring it up, just like they bring 2025 up. They bring all of this stuff up. I ask you this, you talk about the Capitol. 
why are we allowing these millions of people to come through on the southern border? How come she's not doing anything? And I'll tell you what I would do, and I would be very proud to do it. I would say we would both leave this debate right now. I'd like to see her go down to Washington, D.C. during this debate, because we're wasting a lot of time. Go down to, because she's been so bad, it's so ridiculous. Go down to Washington, D.C. and let her sign a bill to close up the border, because they have the right to do it. They don't need bills. They have the right to do it. The President of the United States, you'll get him out of bed, you'll wake him up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you'll say, come on, come on down to the office, let's sign a bill. If he, if he signs a bill that the border is closed, all you have to do is say it. I got the How come she's all lit up and Trump's not If they do that, the border is closed. Well, because she's black and really dark. Unlike Jay Simpson, we talked to the election. Dark to me. I want to know why she doesn't have one of them dots, because it really brings us uh, this into focus, truth uh, all, in these times that we're living in. Uh, Mr. President, for three and a half years after uh, you lost the 2020 election, you repeatedly uh, falsely claimed that you won, many times saying you won in a landslide. In the past couple of weeks yeah. leading up to this debate, uh, you have said, quote, you lost by a whisker, that you, quote, didn't quite make it, that you came up a little bit short. I are, say you, that? are you now acknowledging that you lost in 2020? No, I don't acknowledge that at all. But I you say that say sarcastically, you know that. And we said, oh, we lost by a whisker. That was said sarcastically. Look, there's so much proof. All you have to do is look at it. And they should have sent it back to the legislatures for approval. I got almost 75 million votes, the most votes any single president <laughs> has ever gotten. I was told if I got 63, which was what I got in 2016, you can't be beaten. Uh, the election, people should never be thinking about it. An election is fraudulent. We need two things. We need walls. We need... And we have to have it. Right. We have to have borders, and we have to have good elections. Our elections are bad. And a lot of these illegal immigrants coming in, they're trying to get them to vote. They can't even speak English. They don't even know what country they're in practically. And these people are trying to get them to vote. And that's why they're allowing them to come into our country. I did watch all of these pieces of video. I, I, I didn't detect the sarcasm, lost by a whisker. We didn't quite make it. And we should just point out here as clarification, and you know this, you and your allies, 60 cases, in front of many judges, many of them no, judge looked at it and said they there was said no we didn't have standing. Uh, That's the other thing. They said we didn't have standing, a technicality. Can you imagine a system where a person in an election doesn't have standing, yeah. a president of the United okay, States doesn't have standing? That's how we lost. Yeah. If you look at the facts, yeah. and I'd love to have you do, do a special on it. I'll show you Georgia, yeah. and I'll show you oh, Wisconsin, man. and I'll show you Pennsylvania, yes. and I'll show you... We have so many facts and statistics, but you know what? That doesn't matter, because we have to solve the problem that we have right now. That's old news. And the problem that we have right now is we have a nation in decline, and they have put it into decline. We have a nation that is dying, David. Mr. President, thank you. Uh, Vice President Harris, uh, you heard the president there tonight. He said he didn't say that, that he lost by whisker, so he still uh, believes uh, he did not lose the election. Uh, that was won by President Biden uh, and yourself. But I do want to ask you about something that's come up in the last couple of days. This was a post from uh, President Trump uh, about this upcoming election uh, just weeks away. He said, when I win, those people who cheated, and then he lists donors, voters, election officials, he says will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, which will include long-term prison sentences. One of your campaign's top lawyers responded saying, we won't let Donald Trump intimidate us, we won't let him suppress the vote. Is that what you believe he's trying to do here? Donald Trump was fired by 81 million people. So let's be clear about that. And clearly he is having a very difficult time processing that. But we cannot afford to have a president of the United States who attempts, as he did in the past, to upend the will of the voters in a free and fair election. Now I'm going to tell you that I have traveled the world as Vice President of the United States, and world leaders are laughing at Donald Trump. I have talked with military leaders, some of whom work with you, and they say you're a disgrace. And when you then talk in this way, in a presidential debate, and deny what over and over again are court cases you have lost because you did, in fact, lose that election, it leads one to believe that perhaps we do not have in the candidate, to my right, the temperament or, or the ability to not be confused about fact. You're a That's deeply troubling, and the American people deserve better. 
I'll give you one minute to respond, Mr. President. Let me just tell you about world leaders. Victor Orban, one of the most respected men, is a call a strong man. He's a, he's a tough person. Smart. Prime Minister of Hungary. They said, why is the whole world blowing up? Three years ago it wasn't. Why is it blowing up? He said, because you need Trump back as president. They were afraid of him. China was afraid, and I don't like to use the word afraid, but I'm just quoting him. China was afraid of him. North Korea was afraid of him. Look at what's going on with North Korea, by the way. He said Russia was afraid of him. I ended the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. I'm in love with Kim Jong-un. Give me the hug. Give me one, but he give me a hug, Kim Jong-un. Stop the blowing up. The XL pipeline in our himself. country, he ended that. But he let the Russians build a pipeline going all over Europe and heading into Germany. The biggest pipeline in the world. Look, Viktor Orban said it. He said the most respected, most feared person is Donald Trump. We had no problems when Trump was president. But when this weak, pathetic man that you saw at a debate just a few months ago, that if he weren't in that debate, he'd be running instead of her. She got no votes. He got 14 million votes. What you did, you talk about a threat to democracy. He got 14 million votes and they threw him out of office. And you know what? I'll give you a little secret. He hates her. He can't stand oh, her. Oh, He got 14 million votes. They threw him out. She got zero votes. And when she ran, she was the first one to leave because she failed. And now she's running. I don't understand it, but Mr. I'm President, okay with it because Your time is I think up. we're going to do very well. We've got a lot more to get to. Turning now yes. to the Israel-Hamas war and the hostages who are still being held, Americans wow. among them. Vice That's President right. Harris, in December, you said, quote, Israel has a right to defend itself, but you added, quote, it matters how, saying international humanitarian law must be respected. Israel must do more to protect innocent civilians. You said that nine months ago. Now an estimated 40,000 Palestinians are dead. Nearly 100 hostages remain. Just last week, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said there's not a deal in the making. You President know, Biden has not been able to break through the stalemate. How would you do it? It's her left. Well, let's understand how we got here. Uh -huh. I'm not it's going to look like a Hamas, like a, a terrorist organization, slaughtered 1,200 Israelis, many of them young people who were <clears throat> simply attending a concert. Women were horribly raped. And so absolutely, I said then, I say now, Israel has a right to defend itself. We would. And how it does so matters. Because it is also true, far too many innocent Palestinians have been killed children, mothers. What we know is that this war must end. It must win and like immediately, and the way it will end is we need a ceasefire deal and we money. need the hostages out. And so we will continue to work around the clock Zelensky on that. And yachts and work around the clock regalia. also understanding that we must yeah. chart a that course was, for a two-state solution. True. That's bullshit. And in it's that true. solution, nothing, there must dude. be I will always That's give Israeli the ability to says. defend itself, in particular as it relates to, as it relates to Iran and ass, any threat man. that Iran and its proxies pose to Israel. Yes, but we must have a two-state solution where we can rebuild he's Gaza, where the old, Palestinians old have security, self-determination, and the dignity they so rightly deserve. Uh, uh, President Trump, Joe how would you negotiate old. with Netanyahu and also Hamas in order to get the hostages out and for them to kill the war? I vote for the future of life support in a hospital bed. The president, Russia, would have never, ever, I know Putin very well, he would have never, and there's no threat of either, by the way, for four years, have gone into Ukraine and killed millions of people when you add it up. And far worse than people understand what's going on over there. But when she mentions about Israel, all of a sudden, she hates Israel. She wouldn't even meet with Netanyahu when he went to Congress to make a very important speech. She refused to be there because she was at a sorority party. I won't be there either. She wanted to go to the sorority party. She hates Israel. If she's president, I believe that Israel will not exist yeah, within sure. two years from now. And I've been pretty good at so I hope I'm wrong about that one. She hates Israel. At the same time, in her own way, she hates better? the Arab population because the whole place is going to get blown up. Arabs, Jewish people, Israel, Israel will be gone. 
It would have never happened. Iran was broke under Donald Trump. Now Iran has $300 billion because they took off all the sanctions that I had. Iran had no money for I'll put a few of these in your fridge, Mr. Rip. Three of the 28 different <coughs> uh, spheres of terror, and they are spheres of terror, horrible terror. They had no money. Okay. It was a big yeah, story, and you know it. You covered it very well, I don't well, think he actually. heard you. Yeah. They had no to. money for terror. They were broke. Now they're a rich nation, and now what they're doing is they're spreading that money around. Look at what's happening with the Houthis and Yemen. Look at what's going on in the Middle East. It would have never happened. I will get that settled and fast, and I'll get the war with Ukraine and Russia ended. If I'm president-elect, I'll get it done before even becoming president. Vice President Harris, he says you hate Israel. Oh, that's absolutely not true. I have my entire career and life oh, supported cool. Israel and the Israeli people. He knows that he's trying to, again, divide and, and distract from the reality, which is it is very well known that Donald Trump is weak and wrong on national security and foreign policy. It is well known that he admires dictators, wants to be a dictator on day one, according to himself. It is well known that he said of Putin, that he can do whatever the hell he wants and go into Ukraine. It is well known that he said when Russia went into Ukraine, it was brilliant. It is well known he exchanged love letters with Kim Jong-un. And it is absolutely well known that these dictators and autocrats are rooting for you to be president again because they're so clear. They can manipulate you with flattery and favors. And that is why so many military leaders who you have worked with have told me you are a disgrace. Play that cool. is why That's we understand cool. that we have cool. to have a president That's who is not consistently cool. weak yeah. and wrong on national president security, has. including the importance of upholding and respecting in highest regard our military. Vice President Harris, thank you. And she's the one that caused it that's weak on national security by allowing every nation last month for the year, 168 different countries sending people into our country. Their crime rates are way down. Putin endorsed her last week, said I hope she wins. And I think he meant it. Right. Because what he's gotten away well, with is you? absolutely yeah, incredible. It would have happened one day. The leaders of the yeah, country think that they're weak and incompetent, and they incompetent. They're grossly incompetent. And I just ask one question. Why does Biden go in and kill the Keystone you know, Pipeline all of and approve the single biggest deal that Russia's ever made, one. Nord Stream 2, wow. the biggest pipeline anywhere in the world going to it's Germany and all over Europe? Four. Because they're weak and they're ineffective. And Biden, by the way, is paying a lot of money to with a lot of issues to get to. We'll be right back with much more of this historic ABC News presidential debate from the National Constitution Center right here in Philadelphia. Okay, break time. All he's got to do is ask her a simple question. What have you done at the border? eyes closed, walk into the future. Who say it? She called him. She said, hey, we passed the border bill, but you told it. You called him up. It's all because it's all bullshit. Because your guys sneak other little shit in there. You guys smoke a lot of shit in there, too. Yeah. I can be a gift by Mr. Bunga for a debate picture. The bait picture. Yeah, they come here. Bring out your bed. Bring out your bed. Get the stretcher for Trump. Bring, get the video, Mr. Bunker. Get in there. Yeah, get in my district. And you're fine. My Republican buddy friends here. Yeah. He said. She said. Okay. She said. 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 Tax, immigration, the budget, the economy, health and health care, and the right. environment, is, is and the he now or is he in the No, he's, he's, he's here. Oh, okay. He's surprises. sleeping now because he works third shift. For oh, let's say facts. I, I work third shift she for she said, about we said seven or eight months. I tried it. I liked it because 
when you got out of your work, do your stuff, you know, like go shopping, there's no traffic. Right, but that was a zombie, man. That's yeah, like we started the first house in the front of the Proudly offering a legendary salute discount. You must have a pee break, man. Diaper change for Rodney. Becoming the official outdoor gear provider. You're ridiculous. Because it's more than the great outdoors. They got out. Shut up. 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 Shut up.
You take a look at what's happening. We're in for 250 to 275 it's billion. Yeah, it They're smooth. to 100 to 150. They should be forced <laughs> to equalize. <laughs> With that being said, I want to get the war settled. I know Zelensky very well, and I know Putin very well. I have a good relationship, and they respect your president, okay? They respect me. They don't respect Biden. How would you respect him? Why? For what reason? He hasn't even made a phone call in two years. He's a war he hasn't off spoken Putin. to anybody. Yeah, they don't even try again. Yeah. That is a war that's dying to be settled. I will get it settled before I even become president. If I win, when I'm president-elect, and what I'll do is I'll speak to one, I'll speak to the other, I'll get them together. That war would have never happened. And in fact, when I saw Putin after so I left, full, sure. unfortunately left because our, our country has gone to hell. But after I left, when I saw him building up soldiers, he did it after I left. I said, oh, he must be negotiating. It must be a good, strong point of negotiation. Yeah. Well, it wasn't, because Biden had no idea how to talk to him. He had no idea how to stop it. And now you have millions of people dead, and it's only getting worse, and it could lead to World War III. Don't kid yourself, David. We're playing with World War III, and we have a president that we don't even know if he's... Where is our president? We don't even know if he's a president. And, and just to clarify They threw him out of a campaign like a dog. We don't even know. Is he our president? <laughs> yeah, yes, they did. Mr. President. That doesn't know he's alive. Your time is up. Just to clarify the question, do you believe it's in the U.S. best interest for Ukraine to win this war, yes or no? I think it's the U.S. best interest to get this war finished and just get it done. All right, Negotiate a deal. Because we have to stop all of these human lives from being destroyed. I want to take this to Vice President Harris. I want to get your thoughts on support for Ukraine in this moment, but also as Commander in Chief, if elected, how will you deal with Vladimir Putin and would it be any different from what we're seeing from President Biden? Well, first of all, it's important to remind the former president you're not running against Joe Biden, you're running against me. Ooh! I believe the Bring reason that, for that Trump says that this you war would be over all. within 24 hours is because he would just give it up. And that's not who we are as a person. I understand what happened here. Um, I actually met with Zelensky a few days before Russia invaded, tried through force to change territorial boundaries, to defy one of the most important international rules and norms, which is the importance of sovereignty and territorial integrity. And I met with President Zelensky. I shared with him American intelligence about how he could defend himself. Days later, I went to NATO's eastern flank, to Poland and Romania. And through the work that I and others did, we brought 50 countries together to support Ukraine in its righteous defense. And because of our support, because of the air defense, the ammunition, the artillery, the javelins, the Abrams tanks that we fault. have provided, Ukraine stands as an independent and free country. If Donald Trump were president, Putin would be sitting in Kyiv right now. And understand what that would mean, because Putin's agenda is not just about Ukraine. Understand why the European allies and our NATO allies are so thankful that you are no longer president and that we understand the importance of the greatest military alliance the world has ever known, which is NATO, and what we have done to preserve the ability of Zelensky and the Ukrainians to fight for their independence. Otherwise, Putin would be sitting in Kyiv with his eyes on the rest of Europe, starting with Poland. And why don't you tell the 800,000 Polish Americans right here in Pennsylvania how quickly you would give up for the sake of favor and what you think is a friendship with what is known to be a dictator who would eat you for lunch. Vice President Harris, that war for all both of you on Ukraine tonight. Afghanistan came up in the last hour. I, I wanted her to respond to something you said earlier, and I'll please I'll let you down here. Putin went to Mexico and he wouldn't have lost 300,000 men and women, but he would have been sitting in Moscow quietly. He would have been sitting in Moscow. Dad, give her an ice cream. Much happier than he is right now. But eventually, you know, he's got a thing that. Other people don't have. He's got nuclear weapons. They don't have to talk about that. He's got nuclear weapons. Nobody ever thinks about that. And eventually, uh, maybe he'll use him, and maybe he hasn't been that threatening, but he does have that. Something we don't even like to talk about. Nobody likes to talk about it.
But just so you understand, they sent her to negotiate peace before this war started. Three days later, he went in and he started the war because everything they said was weak and stupid. They said the wrong things. That war should have never started. She was the emissary. They sent her in to negotiate with Zelensky and Putin, and she did. And the war started three days later. And that's the kind of talent we have with her. She's worse than Biden. In my opinion, I think he's the worst president in the history of our country. She goes down as the worst vice president in the history of our country. But let me tell you something. She is a horrible negotiator. They sent her in to negotiate. As soon as they left, Putin did the invasion. President Trump, thank you. You did bring up something. You said she went to negotiate with Vladimir Putin. Vice President Harris, have you ever met Vladimir Putin? Can you clarify tonight? Yet again, I said at the beginning of this debate, you're going to hear a bunch of lies coming from this fellow. And what? here's another one. When I went to meet with President Zelensky, I've now met with him over five times. The reality is it has been body. about standing as America always should as a leader upholding international new rules and norms, as a leader who shows strength, understanding Jared that the alliances we have around well. the world yeah, are building. dependent Pushing on our ability building. to look out for our friends and not favor our enemies because you adore strongmen instead of caring about democracy. And that is very much what is at stake here. The President of the United States is commander in chief and the American people have a right to rely on a president who understands the significance of America's role and responsibility in terms of ensuring that there is stability and ensuring we stand up for our principles and not sell them for the, for the benefit of personal flattery. We've talked about Ukraine and Vladimir Putin. I do want to talk about Afghanistan. It came up in, in the first hour of this debate. I, I want to move on to Afghanistan. He said Trump did the most stuff. amazing thing they I've ever seen. He got these brother. countries, the 28 countries at the time, to pay up. He said, I've never seen. He's the head of NATO. He said, I've never seen. For years, we were paying almost all of NATO. We were being ripped off by European nations both on trade and on NATO. I got them to pay up by saying one of the yeah, statements you made before, if you don't pay, we're not going to protect you, otherwise you would have never gotten it. He said it was Ooh, one of the job. most incredible jobs that he's ever seen done. Thank you. I want to turn to Afghanistan. It came up in the first hour of the debate, and we witnessed a, a poignant moment today on Capitol Hill honoring the soldiers who died in the chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan. I do want to ask the Vice President, uh, do you believe you bear any responsibility in the way that withdrawal played out? Well, I'll tell you, I agreed with President Biden's decision to pull out of Afghanistan. Four presidents said they would, and Joe Biden did. And as a result, America's taxpayers are not paying the $300 million a day we were paying for that endless war. And as of today, there is not one member of the United States military who is in active duty in combat zone in any war zone around the world, the first time this century. But let's understand well, how we got to all. where we are. Donald yeah. Trump, when he was president, 13, 13. negotiated well, so one of the, the weakest deals you can imagine. He calls himself a deal maker. Even all. his national security yeah. advisor said it was a weak, Russia, terrible deal. And here's Russia, how it went China, down. Iran, he bypassed the Afghan government. He negotiated directly with a terrorist organization called the Taliban. The negotiation involved the Taliban getting 5,000 terrorists, Taliban terrorists, released. And get this, no, get this. And the president at the time invited the Taliban to Camp David, a place of storied significance for us as Americans, a place where we honor the importance of American diplomacy, where we invite and receive respected there. world leaders. And this former president, as president, invited them to Camp David because he does not again appreciate the role and responsibility of the president of the United States to be commander in chief with a level of respect. And this gets back to the point of how he has consistently disparaged and demeaned members of our military, fallen soldiers, and the work that we must do to uphold the strength 
and the respect of the United States of America around the world. Vice President Harris, thank you. President Trump, your response to her saying that you began the negotiations yeah, thank with the you. Taliban. So, if you take a look at that period of time, the Taliban was killing our soldiers, a lot of them, them with snipers. And I got involved with the Taliban because the Taliban was doing the killing. That's the fighting force within Afghanistan. They don't bother doing that because, you know, they deal with the wrong people all the time. But I got involved. And Abdul is the head of the Taliban. He is still the head of the Taliban. Oh, and I told saying? Abdul, don't do it anymore. You do it anymore, you're going to have problems. And he said, why do you send me a picture of my house? I said, you're going to have to figure that out, Abdul. And for 18 months, we had nobody killed. We did have an agreement negotiated by Mike Pompeo. It was a very good agreement. The reason it was good, it was we were getting out. We would have been out faster than that, but we wouldn't have lost the soldiers. We wouldn't have left Sorry, many Americans here. behind. Uh, we, we wouldn't here? have left. Yeah. We wouldn't oh, have left. I, I, I just Eighty-five billion oh. dollars worth yeah. of brand new That's beautiful, beautiful military equipment behind. I didn't show the endorsements. It's not that bad. You know, it's blew good it. for football season. The agreement said you have to do this, 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 yeah, this, well, this, it, and they I didn't do it. it. They didn't I'm do it. The agreement I got was, the wall, was terminated I got by us because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. I'm, I'm these people did the, the worst yeah, withdrawal. You like football? In, football? In my opinion, the most embarrassing no, moment in the history watch. of our country. And by the way, I'm I'm the I'm 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 the butter because they saw how incompetent she and her boss are. President Trump, thank you. I'm going to move on now to race and yeah, politics just about in this country. Here. Mr. President, you recently said of Vice President Harris, quote, I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago <laughs> when she happened to turn black, and now she wants to be known as black. I want to ask a bigger picture question here tonight. She, she Why do you believe it's college. appropriate to weigh in on the racial identity of your opponent? I don't, and I don't care. I don't care what she is. I don't care. Uh, you make a big deal out of something. I couldn't care less. Whatever she wants to be is okay with me. But those were your words. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, all I can say is I read where she was not black that she put out. And I'll Maybe. say that. And then I read that she was black. And it's okay. Either one was okay with me. That's up to her. That's Vice, up to her. Vice President Harris, your thoughts on this? I think it's, I mean, honestly, I think it's a, a tragedy that we have um, someone who wants to be president who has consistently over the course of his career attempted to use race to divide the American people. Hmm. You know, I do believe that the vast majority of us know that we have so much more in common than what racist. separates us, and we don't want this kind of approach that is just constantly trying to divide us, and especially by race. And let's remember where Donald Trump started. He was a, 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 a land, he owned land, he owned buildings, and he, he was investigated because he refused to rent property to black families. Let's remember to this is paid. the same individual yeah, who to took out a full page ad in the New York Times calling to the Walmart. execution of five young black and Latino boys who were innocent, the Central Park Five, took out a full page ad calling for their execution. This is the same individual who spread birther lies about the first black president of the United States. Still never proved And I think the American, American people want better than that, want better than this, want someone who understands, as I do, I travel our country. We see in each other a friend. We see in each other a neighbor. We don't want a leader who is constantly trying to have He's Americans point kid. their fingers at each other. I meet with people all the time who tell me, can we please just have discourse about how we're going to invest in the aspirations and the ambitions and the dreams of the American people? Knowing that regardless yeah, of people's color or the language that grandmother speaks, we illegals. all have the same dreams and aspirations and want a president who invests in those, not in hate and division. Vice President Harris, thank you. Lindsay? President Trump, this is now your third time. This is the most divisive presidency in the history of our country. There's never been anything like it. They're destroying our country, and they come up with things like what she just said.
going back many, many years, where a lot of people, including Mayor Bloomberg, agreed with me on the Central Park Five. They admitted, they said, they pled guilty. And I said, well, if they pled guilty, they badly hurt a person, killed a person, ultimately. And if they pled guilty, then they pled, we're not guilty. But this is a person that has to stretch back years, 40, 50 years ago, because there's nothing now. I built one of the greatest economies in the history of oh, the yeah. world, and I'm gonna build it again. It's gonna be bigger, better, and stronger. But they're destroying our economy. They have no idea what a good economy is. Their oil policies, every single policy. And remember this, she is Biden. You know, she's trying to get away from Biden. I don't know the gentleman, she says. She is Biden. The worst inflation we've ever had a horrible economy because inflation has made it so bad that you can't get away with that. Time's up. Time's up. Uh, yeah, three to six bucks. Briefly. Clearly, I am not Joe Biden, and I am certainly not Donald Trump. Well, you're neat and what I do offer is a new generation of leadership for our country. One who believes in what is possible. One who brings a sense of optimism about what we can do instead of always disparaging the American people. I believe in what we can do to strengthen our small businesses, which is why I have a plan. Let's talk about our plans and, and let's compare the plans. I have a plan notes. to give startup businesses $50,000 tax deduction to pursue their ambitions, their innovation, their ideas, their hard work. I have a plan, $6,000 for young families for the first year of your child's life to help you in that most critical stage of your child's development. I have a plan that is about you allowing the people to you be able to pursue what has been in terms of the American dream by offering help with down payment of $25,000 down payment assistance for first time home buyers. That's the kind of conversation I believe, nice. David, that people really want tonight, as opposed to a conversation that is constantly about belittling and name calling. Let's turn the page Vice and President move Harris, forward. Thank you, let's turn to policy. President let's Trump, turn to policy. To move on. President Trump, let's turn to policy, please. To defund the police. She has a flat plan to confiscate everybody's gun. President she Trump, has a plan to, to not allow fracking in Pennsylvania or anywhere else. Okay, that's, that's what her plan is until just recently. I, I just think President, President Trump, Trump, no, the President Trump, President has said no, something I'm sorry. twice that no, I need to move on. Okay, I'm sorry, we're going to move on, Vice one President time Harris. To what he President has Trump, this is now your yeah. third time running for president. You have long vowed to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. You have failed to accomplish that. You now I'll say you're going to keep Obamacare, quote, unless we can do something much better. Last month, you said, quote, we're working on it. So tonight, nine years after you first started running, do you have a plan, and can you tell us what it is? Obamacare was lousy health care. Always was. It's My not very good today. And what I said, that if we Obama come up with something, and we are working on things, oh, yeah. we're going to do it, and we're going to replace it. But remember this. I inherited Obamacare because Democrats yeah, wouldn't change, change it. They wouldn't it. vote for it. They were unanimous. They wouldn't vote to change it. If they would have done that, we would have had a much better plan than Obamacare. But the Democrats came up. They wouldn't vote for it. I had a choice to make when I was president. Do I save it and make it as good as it can be, never going to be great, or do I let it rot? And I felt I had an obligation, even though politically it would have been good to just let it rot and let it go away. I decided, and I told my people, the top people, and they're very good people. I have a lot of good people in this, that administration. We read about the bad ones. We had some real bad ones, too, and so do they. They have really bad ones. The difference is they don't get rid of them. But let me just explain. I had a choice to make. Do I save it and make it as good as it can be, or do I let it rot? And I saved it. I did the right thing. But it's still never going to be great, and it's too expensive for people. And what we will do is we're looking at different plans. If we can come up with a plan that's going to cost our people, our population, less money and be better health care than Obamacare, then I would absolutely do it. But until then, I'll do it as please. good as it can be run. So just a yes or no, you still do not have a plan? I have concepts of a plan. I'm not president right now. But if 
We come up with something. I would only change it if we come up with something that's better and less expensive. And there are concepts and options we, we have to do that. And you'll be hearing about it in the not too distant future. Vice President Harris, in 2017, you supported Bernie Sanders' proposal to do away with private insurance and create a government run health care system. Two years later, you proposed a plan that included a private a insurance station. option. Sure. What is your plan today? Well, first of all, I absolutely <laughs> support, and over the last four years as Vice President, private health care options. But what we need to do oh, is maintain and grow the Affordable Care Act. But I, I'll, I'll get to that, Lindsay. I just need to respond to a previous point <laughs> that the former president has made. I've made very clear my position on fracking. And then this business about taking everyone's guns away. Tim Walls and I are both gun owners. We're not taking anybody's guns away. So stop with the continuous lying about this stuff. As it relates to the Affordable Care Act, understand, let, just look at the history to know where people stand. When Donald Trump was president, 60 times he tried to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. 60 times. I was a senator at the time. When I will never forget the early morning hours when it was up for a vote in the United States Senate and the late, great John McCain, who you have disparaged oh, God, as being, like a, a, you don't like him, you said at the time, because he got caught. He was an American hero. The late, great John McCain, I will John never McCain forget that night, that walked onto the thing. Senate floor and I said, got out of the I can't no, go. you I don't. Got bone no, you I don't. Golf. No, you don't get rid of the Affordable yeah, Care Act. You, you have no plan. Run in trenches. And what the Affordable Golfing, Care Act has done is eliminate the ability of insurance companies to deny people with pre-existing conditions. Yeah. I don't have to tell the people watching tonight, you remember what that was like? Remember when an insurance company could deny if a child had asthma, if someone was a breast cancer survivor, if a, if a grandparent had diabetes. And thankfully, as I've been vice president and we over the last four years have strengthened the Affordable Care Act, we have allowed for the first time Medicare to negotiate drug prices on behalf of you, the American people. Donald Trump said he was gonna allow Medicare to negotiate drug, drug prices, he never did, we did. And now we have capped the cost of insulin at $35 a month. Since I've been vice president, we have capped the cost of prescription medication for seniors at $2,000 a year. And when I am president, we will do that for all people understanding that the value I bring to this is that access to health care should be a right and not just a privilege of those who yeah. can afford it. And the plan has it? to be <coughs> yes. to strengthen the Affordable Care Act not get, get back rid of what you it. paid in. That's That's the problem problem in terms there. of where Donald Trump stands on that. I want to move to an issue well, that's important for a lot. made a mistake. I don't think I'll ever get Number back one, to John McCain fought Obamacare for 10 years, but it wasn't only him. It were all of the Democrats that kept it going. And you know well, what? It's better than not having it. We can do much better than Obamacare, much less money. But she won't improve private insurance for people, private medical insurance. That's another thing she doesn't want to do. President people are paying privately for insurance that have worked hard and made money and they want to have private. She wants everybody to be on government insurance where you wait six months for an operation that you need to meet. President Trump, day. thank you. We have another issue that we'd like to that's get really to that's important for a number of Americans, like eight, and eight, particularly eight, younger eight, voters, eight, and that's eight, climate eight, change. Eight, President eight, Trump, eight, with regard to the environment, eight, you say eight, that eight, we have to have clean air and clean water. Vice eight, President eight, Harris, you call climate eight, change eight, an eight, existential eight, threat. Eight, yeah. The question to you both eight, tonight eight, is eight, what would you do to fight climate change? And Vice President Harris, we'll start with you. One minute for you each. Well, the former president had said that climate change is a hoax. And what we know is that it is very real. You ask anyone who lives in a state who has experienced these extreme weather occurrences, who now is either being denied home insurance or is being jacked up. You ask anybody who has been um, the victim of what that means in terms of losing their home, having nowhere to go. We know that we can actually deal with this issue. The young people of America care deeply about this issue. And I am proud that as vice president over the last yeah, four years, here. we have invested a trillion dollars in a clean energy economy while we have also increased domestic gas production to historic levels. We have created over 800,000 new manufacturing jobs while I have been vice president. We have invested in clean energy to the point that we are opening up factories around the world. Donald Trump said he was gonna create manufacturing jobs. He lost manufacturing jobs. And I'm also proud to have the endorsement of the United Auto Workers and Sean Fain, 
who also know that part of building a clean energy economy includes investing in American made products, American automobiles. It includes growing what we can do around American manufacturing and opening up auto plants, not closing them like happened under Donald Trump. Vice President Harris, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me just tell you, there lost 10,000 manufacturing jobs this last month. It's going, they're all leaving. Uh, they're building big auto plants in Mexico, in many cases owned by China. They're building these massive plants, and they think they're going to sell their cars into the United States because of these people. What they have given to China is unbelievable, but we're not going to let that. We'll put tariffs on those cars so they can't come into our country because they will kill the United Auto Workers and any auto worker, whether it's in Detroit or South Carolina or any other place. What they've done to business and manufacturing in this country is horrible. We have nothing because they, they refuse. You know, Biden doesn't go after people because supposedly China paid him millions of dollars. He's afraid to do it between him and his son. They get all this money from Ukraine. They get all this money from all of these different countries. And then you wonder, why is he so loyal to this one, that one, Ukraine, China? Why is he? Why did he get three and a half million dollars from the mayor of Moscow's wife. Why did he get, why did she pay him three and a half million dollars? This well, is I a crooked administration and they're selling our country down the yeah. yeah. to yeah. yeah. Just to show how corrupt their We'll be right back. The closing is. statements from both of our candidates in the story of this ABC News bell presidential bell debate from Philadelphia. Your bell. Bring out the bell. That's because you only rang it when it was, uh, she said something smart. That's why I haven't heard anything. The people who voted. I thought they'd be going on. I was using it sparingly. Okay. Audiences. You can ring it too. Do not have to And an ace. So you can take a lot of break. There's not going to retire shelter in Google. The the clock. The president. 35. Yeah, he can do things. Oh, okay, we have another half hour. See it now, in theaters. Free to May not be suitable for children only 13. Look at this city that uh, said, well, these well, are supposed to go two hours. I thought so an hour and a half. Oh, up the financial oh, oh, what would become of them? And they just come a Robin Hood no, and allow us to tour and their every year. Unlimited deposit bonuses and handsome retirement that shape. That was interesting. They would descend into chaos. But actually it looks like chaos. Idiot. Huh? Are you idiot. still recording? Why has America accepted the way for all day? Oh, you gotta be dead by now. Are we live? Introducing Mike. Is there a, there a picture up there? Yeah, you're and still going. Right, you're still going. Get up to five I gotta take my Trump earpiece off. Data. Say hello to the camera. Yeah, buddy. Hello. <laughs> yeah, sweet baby Jesus. We, we're, we're recording. Yeah, we're going to have to recharge that tonight. You know what, can you my Trump pants out of my ear? Come here. Oh, yes. Oh, Tommy, why? Yeah, Tommy, don't you have a question about that? Don't you have a lot of They don't understand that our football journey isn't even close. Oh, yeah. Oh, she thinks she's in the basketball ball. I mean, the Greece never was. That's what. I should run. You got an outfit in here? I can make sure my phone's charged. Yeah, right behind this. Oh, right there. Okay, sweet. My name is Christine Mann. I'm the Army veteran. My retirement funds allow me to be a volunteer. We'll only take a few hours to upload this video. I'll watch it tomorrow. As long as you can make an income. Why stop? No, I don't think you want to replay this disaster. If anybody watches this video, man. Oh, yeah, you got to save that in the archives. It'll be in the archives. It is the beat night in America. What a Donald stick Trump, and recorded on a stick. All right, YouTubers, we're charging up here. Analysis and reaction events. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will join us live tonight on RFK.
There's another side. I bet you're going to get a lot of likes on this exciting video. Choice. I don't think you're going to sit through this unless they're with a full range of vehicles and available power trains. But I got to put it out there. The real combination of power and capability with gas, hybrid, all the electric. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Well, I don't think you can see it because you don't have the light on. But more important than the power you choose is what you choose to do with it. You know, it's so easy to make a policy. Oh, health care for everybody. Well, what about us working people? We're the ones that are paying for it. They just keep printing money. Not a dirty spurs person. This is a pay for it. And the people say it's sponsored by Mike Lindley. Cases assigned on a random basis to participate in law firms. Attention, parents. If your child was born premature and later diagnosed with exercising enterocolitis, also known as NEC, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Certain types of baby formulas have been linked to an increased risk of newborns developing NEC, a severe and potentially fatal intestinal illness that oftentimes requires surgery. If your child was born premature or at a low birth weight and later diagnosed with necrotizing enterocolitis, the baby formula your child was fed may be to blame, and you may be entitled to significant compensation from the manufacturer. Call right now to find out if you qualify. Be a victim. Get the help you deserve. There are time deadlines to file a claim, so don't wait. Call right now. Call 800-619-3186. That's 800-619-3186. Yeah, yeah, quit. You quit? Or quit? After 37 years. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, they, they still got good preachers out of them. Now we're wearing their shirts here. Yeah. You can see the back. David Newark. Broadcast the Presbyterian. Welcome back tonight. The time yeah. has come for closing statements. Good preaching, but... Harris, we can with you. He just you couldn't know. take the truth. So I think you've heard He's tonight take the two truth. very I, I could not take the visions for our country. The truth. One that is focused on the future. Oh. And the other that is focused on the past. Holy crap. And an attempt to take the I thought you guys were like this. But no, we're not I, I, you know, and I my, my wife quit him. Quit him. We all have so much more in common than that separates And we can chart a new way forward. And a vision of that of includes that. having a plan, understanding oh, the aspirations, right the dreams, the hopes, oh, yeah. the I mean, ambition gotta, of the American gotta, people, which is why pray, I intend to create. An opportunity economy, investing in small businesses, in new families, in what we can do with our protected seniors, what we can do. Mike wants to know why you looked at him. Hardworking folks are breaking, bringing down the cost of living. You looked right at me. I believe in what we can do together. That is about sustaining America's standing in the world. You give an honest day's work for what you pay. That we so rightly deserve, including. Respecting our military yeah, and ensuring yeah. we have the most fighting force in the world. I will be a president that will protect our fundamental rights and freedoms, well, including the right of a woman to make decisions about her own body Hopefully and not have her government tell her what to yeah. do. He doesn't, I don't I'll see tell you, no I well, started my career so as a prosecutor. I was the DA, Saturday, I was an attorney general, a United States senator, I and now vice president. I only have one client, the people. And I'll tell you, as a prosecutor, I never asked a victim or a witness, are you a Republican or a Democrat? The only time I ever asked them, are you okay? No, it's still going. I got and that's the kind of president we need. Someone who cares about you and is not putting themselves first. I intend to be a president for all Americans and focus on what we can do over the next 10 and 20 years to build back up our country by investing right now. Build back better. That's a dollar she should leave right now, yeah, go right. down to that beautiful yeah. White House, go to the Capitol, Roll get everyone right, together right, and right, do the right, things right. you want to do, but you haven't done it, and you won't do it. Can't find because you believe in things that the American girl. people don't believe in. You believe yeah. in things like, we're not going to frack, we're not going to take fossil fuel, we're not going to do... Things that are going to make this country strong, whether it's you like it or not. Tonight, Germany that. tried that, and within That's one year they were back to building well, he can't hear so energy like, plants. I'm not that was going on. We can't rails. sacrifice our country for the sake of big vision. But I just ask one simple just question. 
Why I don't didn't care if you're she do it? We're a failing yeah. nation. Gay or straight. We're a nation Listen to what he's saying right now. We're in serious decline. We're being laughed at all over the you world. All over the world they're laughed. I know the leaders very well. They're coming to see me. They call country. me. We're we got the oil. All over the world. They don't understand what we happened got the to gas. us as a nation. We're not That's a all leader. We, do. we don't have That's any do. idea what's going on. We have wars going on in the I Middle East. We have wars going on with Russia and Ukraine. We're going to end up in a third world war, and it'll be a war like no other because of nuclear weapons, the power of weaponry. I rebuilt our entire military. She gave a lot of it away to the Taliban. She gave it to Afghanistan. What these people have done to our country, and maybe toughest of all, is allowing millions of people to come into our country. Many of them are criminals, and they're destroying our country. The worst president, the worst vice president I think if he gets in the in, history of our country. Stops that war in President Ukraine. Trump, thank you. Yeah. And Russia's going to fall. He can't stop here in Philadelphia. Get the Nobel Peace Prize. I'm Lindsay Davis. And I'm David Muir. Thank you for watching here in the U.S. and all, all over right, the world. Really after, all of us here at ABC. After debate, yeah. interview, overall impressions. All right, that is a wrap on the Harris oh! presidential debate <laughs> now in the book. Here with us tonight for post-debate analysis for him. Who wants to go first and give their two cents? Mr. Strass, what's your overall impressions? My impression is that drill, baby, drill. Keep building the wall. Keep building the wall. Anything else there? That's enough. That's all we got to do. I'm all for drilling. I just got to find a willing partner to drill. How about you, Mr. Mike? Uh, I think we need um, voter ID. Voter ID is good. One of the most important things. I mean, I get ID'd every day to buy cigarettes and beer, but not to vote. It's kind of a joke. Um, Democrats are still the devil. Yeah. Satan incarnate. And uh, are my horns covered up. I can't see. <laughs> And Trump just needs to really shut his mouth. <laughs> like, really, he really does. Yeah. You think he's killing himself in this debate? He's killing himself every day he talks. Every day. What about his rallies? I think that's part of the, well, I still don't believe the results of 2020, but I think his mouth, that last debate kind of ruined it, where they were going back and forth. Because yeah. he's... Well, I like him. Did Trump's mouth kill himself, or what do you think? He could have done better. He could have done better, but for for a seventy year old fart, he did pretty good. If an educated person watched that debate, they would learn that he's right. I was impressed. I was impressed that he he kept his composure and did. But I was impressed with Kamala too. I don't know where she she had the answers for the questions, and they didn't come from. The small Her. handful of inches of She knew them questions eyes. were coming. But well, she got, she prepped. She's, she's an intelligent so woman. That's what I think. All, all right, Miss Jen. I'm just going to say, go Trump. Go Trump. <laughs> she said she's you know how, I'll, I'll tell them where to go. <laughs> but do you know how Kamala got started? How'd she get started? Willie Brown, baby. That's why they call her Neep Ed Harris. You know who Willie Brown is, right? Oh, who's the Willie, man? Who's Willie Brown? Wasn't he the. Mayor of San Francisco. Okay, I did not know. Oh yeah, you were up on California politics. Well, that's how she got. Look how, yeah, exactly. It, what's your source of information here? Oh, let me see. Is that Willie Brown? No. Right. He's a two phone phone operator. I'm a one finger phone operator. Sean Hannity's in the spin room. Uh, Sean Hannity's in the spin room. We're in the spin garage. We're spinning around here. We other parts of what he said. Oh, this video is 150 some minutes long. Shit. Talked about this tonight. Former President Trump. You know, I don't family. have it. I thought I saved it. Probably got pulled off. Of technical difficulties. It no, got, I probably got pulled off Twitter or uh, TikTok. It got removed by the Russian you know, interference like team. The same people that wanted to ban TikTok. Biden, Harris, are on TikTok. How about that? Good night, Sean. Good night, Fox. And now I get to see my selfie. Good night, America. How are you? Don't you know me? I'm your native son. We're on the Kamala train. 
we're going to roll over Trump. God bless everyone, and she'll make America great. Good night, America. I'll let you look at Sean's. Sean looks like he's falling apart. He looks very plastic. God bless America, YouTubers. We're out.